Congratulations, Andy, on taking over as the 10th president for 2021. Thank you, Ravi. Okay. So, uh, you've been with Kapiro Society for a long time, with a long term voluntary experience there at the leadership role. When you're now coming to 10s, which is a smaller society, there will be a lot of learnings you bring from Kapiro Society. Would you like to take us through some of those things you want to bring in here from your experience? And what would you think? Yeah, so. Yeah, you're right. So I've been with the Computer Society since 2010. Uh, so I served on the committees. I became the VP of their education. And I was um, elected to the Board of Governors. So uh, I know the Computer Society organizes in the inside and out. They spend so much time. I actually worked for three presidents, under three presidents, as a VP, which is not usual for doing the same job. Point by three presidents. Uh, when I come here, uh, I got elected as a president of TEMS. The biggest difference is computer society is focused on the technology itself, and that's something a lot of us good at. And TEMS is actually focused on people rather than the technologies. How does people managing technologies? That's a pretty big shift. And the good thing about TEMS is that every society needs a piece of management, leaders. And we cut across all society. That is why we are able to attract and collaborate with different societies. That's the first difference I've seen. The other big difference is that the, the magnitude of the size for Computer society, at one point, it has 120,000 people. Now it may be down to 60. Compared to what we are, you can see that there's a huge difference True. in the challenges. Yeah. Right? What I saw here that we need to do is we're organized to solve for a small group of people. True. We need to restructure it. So we could push down our decision making, not just by 20 people running the board, yeah. but by different bodies that have different responsibility doing different work. So we need to structure ourselves, figuring out who's doing what, who can make decisions for us, how do we push it up. Yeah, thanks, I'm quite sure we will make those changes. Um, conferences have been a very key element of TEM strategy. Uh, we've started TEMSCON in 2017. We've had three good years of running this conference. I think under your leadership, we are now looking at how to take this conference as global, make it bigger. Um, I think there are several strategies you put in place. So if you could share uh, going forward at various conferences we are doing across the globe, the reasons behind them and what we are doing with them. Yeah, so yeah, one of the things I bring to the table is I'm already having a huge network around I work quite a bit in the global stage. I usually get invited to different parts of the world for speaking, including Africa, Europe, China, Australia. So I see different cultures, I see different needs. And it's very important for us to be part of conferences that tell us to the culture and the need of the people in the regions. So that's why that we are offering tents come in China, in Asia, in India, as well as in Europe. And also, we are really starting to focus on some of the MENA area, yeah. where we are reaching out to partners, collaborate with them. So um, for us, I think the potential are huge. Things that we need to do is to have a very good partners that we partner with doesn't matter which reasonable goal. And we require very strong local chapter and section support. If we do not have that, our conference would be really struggling. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think that's also the reason behind the new strategy of looking for regional leaders. So if you could also share your ideas on how do we want to uh, bring up the regional leadership, the local chapters to get engaged, 
and at the same time bringing them into the global scene. Yeah. So, one other thing I haven't finished the answer to the question about conferences is ultimately we want to make it to the global stage where everybody heard about TAMS. One way to do that is working with United Nations, yeah. where many countries belong to one area. True. They come together. Uh, so our strategy has been, how do we bring TAMS research, TAMS academic experts, to, to collaborate with some of the United Nations conferences yeah. where countries get together, trying to solve the same problem. So for me, that is pretty much the ultimate goal for yeah. us as a team. Back to your questions about how do you do to tell it to the different regions? I can't take the credit for that. Yeah. That was yours. Yeah. That we need to have a regional chair True. for different areas where not only do they just in chapter conferences, they almost like a mini president yeah. for leaders for different areas Absolutely. with the full support from finances, logistics, conference planning, publications, True. all that needed in a smaller scale, but has to tell them to different so we hope to see some results by them. They are trying to identify all of them. Right. Uh, also, another area where TEMS has been very active is to build communities around selected topics, and uh, we have called them as technical activity committees. And various groups have been formed so that we can bring a lot of like-minded people who can contribute to a particular topic. I think uh, with your leadership, we are also trying to expand these groups, modify, make it very contextual to what is required now. So maybe if you can share some ideas on what we are doing in those areas. Yes. So in TAMS, we traditionally have five focus areas. And that suits really well for enterprises that were people working in big corporations. We also have area where emerging people innovate yeah. and people in entrepreneurship. So for me, we need to start expanding out some of the marketing demand of some of the technologies management area or the policy area. Yeah. So policy area is like some kind of standards for global AI, distributed AI standards, yeah. which is a great thing to do. A lot of people are passionate about it. We bring them together. Things like um, the equity and minority, where people are focusing on growing the the uh, the underprivileged people or the minority, I think that is also very important for us to be able to get young professional women engineering to are in uh, supporting what we're doing. No, absolutely, I think uh, that will bring a lot more uh, cohesiveness among all our members and also give them a sense of contribution. Uh, publications have been a backbone of uh, TEMS. We've had EMR, Transactions and Engineering Management, uh, also a popular newsletter leader. So any, any inputs on things which you would like to bring in, uh, in these areas to make it more popular? Yeah, that's, a, that's actually one of our shining areas. Yeah. We, my predecessors, Michael Condry, under his leadership, he turned along with the, the whole team. <coughs> Our publications become a very lucrative area to support our activities that we have. The EMR really transformed itself to become a must read because the contents are today, the contents are fresh. Yeah. We no longer re reprint somebody else's article, we do that. And our journals are ranked top journals in Australia. And that is not by accident. True. That was by the leadership and very talented. Mm -hmm. So I think we got a really good team that actually is going to change our delivery method, changing our approach to serve some of the young people. Especially our young professional 
to lead to be receptive, it's actually specialized in the area to help us thinking about it. Yeah. Very nice factor is also that, uh, like you said, it's all about people leading technology. And now you also have a board which probably has wide variety of people from different regions, different countries. How happy are you with that? And what, what do you think about the team you've got to take the things forward? You know, you know, I came to this with the concept that, hey, if I can manage 60,000 people, that's enough. Just walk in the park. Yeah. I can do much better with three, 4,000 people. Little do I know the dynamic of the board, it doesn't matter how big you serve, yeah. it's just as complicated, if not more complicated, depending on that. And one of the things that really stress out the board is that because of we have to do everything ourselves. True. We don't get support from uh, some of the uh, equipment staff that yeah. could help us out. So we live, anything we want to do, one of us has to do it. Yeah. So it becomes a huge challenge on the demand of people's time. Yeah, it's very much like a startup. It's because okay. you are starting off trying to put a growth plan and you have limited resources. So I think that's a very challenging thing. And I hope in the next few years, that your leadership in the future, we grow into a much bigger company, much bigger organization as we go along. And the only way to do that, Ravi, is we started to actually trust in each other. Absolutely. We get to the point where we say, you know what, the decision you're going to make is going to be set as mine. Yeah. I made it. So you go ahead and make it. Yeah. Having that extended trust to our colleagues, to our board members, to our volunteers, I think that would empower a lot of uh, exciting people to True. come forward and yeah. want to help out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So looking forward to your term of next two years and future as we go along and all the best for your tenure. And I'm also equally excited to be part of the team and make things happen. I think uh, we have a lot of strategies. I think the most important thing is how we do and what we do in the next few years. Any last comments you want to add? Well, you asked me how's my team. Yeah. I think the team is amazing. They are a lot of hardworking professionals <clears throat> coming in all different areas, sure. different backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, it is a blessing and a challenge. Yeah. But the team is very strong. The team is dedicated in different parts of the world. The new men, new board member came in with so much excitement and enthusiasm. I think it is very exciting to work with the team. Absolutely. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. And I look forward to working together. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Forward to you.